Hey folks, I'm, I'm Kevin Gallagher. I'm the director of the Global Development Policy Center. I personally don't do much research in Africa, but I'm pinch hitting for a couple of the folks who are who are teaching or, or couldn't be here. Uh, this is the one? This is the one who, or, or couldn't, who couldn't be here. The GDP Center is one of the 16 centers that, uh, that Gloria oversees that are university-wide centers. We've got about 40 faculty members associated with us, and, and we have three research groups. Uh, one called the Human Capital Initiative. You'll hear by Mahesh, from Mahesh Kara uh, uh, right after this. Uh, the Global China Initiative. I'll talk a little bit about some of their work, and Sitsi's work falls under that. And another one called Global Economic Governance. So I'll fly through some stuff that. Uh... Oh, it's this one. Sorry. Go this way. So um, first, the GDP Center holds something called the uh, Chinese Loans to Africa d database. Uh, China is has added a new World Bank to the world uh, over the past decade in terms of the amount of finance that it offers developing countries. But unlike the World Bank, they don't, you can't just go to find out where the data comes from and, and track all the different projects. So we have a big team here managed by uh, Torella Moses, who's here, that we annually collect data and create data sets of Chinese overseas economic activity and make them available as public goods we just published a report with the African Economic Research Consortium, which is a consortium of economics departments uh, it, throughout universities in Africa, put out an Africa uh, bulletin on, these, on China's trends in, in Africa and some of their impacts. Uh, we also have uh, no, doing a number of uh, research studies on, uh, with these data. And the one that we're the most excited about recently is we've looked at what are called the spillover impacts of Chinese built infrastructure in Africa. If you look at the upper left-hand corner, you can see that uh, Africa has become much more luminous at night, meaning there's more lights at night. That's what that picture can show you. Uh, what we did was used our spatially located African database to look at the extent to which A, Chinese infrastructure projects had any role in that luminosity, and B, did it also spur economic activity in and around those infrastructure projects, and they, did they also have what are called spillover, or did they have impacts? If you can read regression, we did it on, on, a, on a whole bunch of different kind of infrastructure projects, and if you can read a regression table, we find that A, yes, Chinese infrastructure projects are robustly as associated with economic growth in Africa, but they also have secondary regional impacts far away from the infrastructure that also impact in economic growth and luminosity at night. Interestingly, and consistent with the rest of the research, uh, the World Bank has no such effect on economic growth. Uh, Solomon Owusu and David Lagakos are both teaching at this time, and so they can't be here, but I want to talk about two of their projects. So uh, one of them is where uh, they are working with one of our, our Global China Fellows to look at the impact of Chinese investment in Africa on low-carbon low manufacturing growth in the region. And secondly, uh, Solomon and David are working on a, on a piece which is why are measured hours of work so low for agricultural workers in Africa? If you look at the data there, it doesn't look like African laborers in the agricultural sector work as much relative to the output. It's a, is it a puzzle in the data or is there something going on here that we need to learn more about? Uh, our group that looks at global economic governance has a big project on uh, climate change and financial stability. And another one of our partners is called the African Center for Economic uh, Transformation. They did some modeling and found that, A, if you look at the left-hand side here, that climate change has significant macroeconomic impacts on Africa. We also did another study that uh, shows that, unfortunately, because of the high levels of debt that African countries have, only a handful of countries have the fiscal space to do anything about climate change, which is a big problem. Did I do it in under five minutes? There we go.